welcome back to Erica's Little Welsh Garden. Today I'm doing a really easy step-by-step -step guide on how I make pumpkin wine. Thanks very much for joining me and you know what, if this is the first time you're watching me and you really enjoy my video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you've been notified of all of my latest videos. Anyway, let's get started with making this. Okay, so the equipment you're going to need to successfully brew this pumpkin wine. Firstly, you'll need a glass or a plastic demijohn, 4.5 litres and an airlock. These both need to be sterilised before any liquid goes in there. You'll also need a sterilised funnel. You'll need a large pan to actually boil up the pumpkin in and then you'll need a separate large pan so that you can strain the pulp through. So you'll need a muslin and a sieve. If you don't have a muslin it's absolutely fine. All you need to do is use a clean tea towel or a clean pillowcase. I wouldn't use your best pillowcase though because it's going to stay. And then you'll also need a potato masher and a ladle. These don't need to be sterilised. And the ingredients that you'll need to make this wine. And this is going to come out at about 15% but I'm not using a hydrometer here. Okay, so you need 1.3 kilograms of sugar and you'll need 1.7 kilograms of pumpkin. If you don't have 1.7 kilograms, that's absolutely fine. Just use as much as you've got and try and thinly slice it. Then you'll need the juice of one lemon and you'll need two tea bags for this recipe as well. And then to actually start brewing it, you'll need the yeast. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to put four litres of water into our large pan and just turn it on. Then we need to add all of the pumpkin. So what we need to do now is just kind of bring that to the boil and let it boil. And while that's happening, you just need to boil the kettle and then put the two tea bags in a mug of hot water and just leave it until later. Okay, so the um, pumpkin has been boiling on the hob now for about five minutes. So now what you need to do is use your masher and just kind of give it a mash so it all amalgamates with the water. Because it's only been boiling for about five minutes, the pumpkin's still quite hard. Um, but yeah, you just want to kind of keep doing this until all of the pumpkin is completely squashed. Okay, so I've been mashing this now for about five minutes. I'm really sorry, my camera's having some issues with focusing because of the um, steam, so I do apologise. Um, but you'll know it's kind of... Um, all boiled enough when you kind of pull your masher out and you'll see just the skin um, the hard skin because all of the flesh is kind of mashed off there so if you had loads of time in the world it would be absolutely fine now if you just turn this off and leave it overnight um, you know it would still keep amalgamating and kind of brew really nicely but I don't have time for that and I want to get it set up and started tonight so what I'm going to do now is just turn it off from the boil and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tea I just need to take the tea bags out so I'll just add the tea to that now that tea is going to add tan into the wine but also give it kind of a lovely kind of golden colour I don't know if you can see actually now kind of how much more golden it looks and then we're just going to add the lemon juice to the wine this just um, adds some acidity to the wine um, but if you don't have a lime uh, sorry a lemon you could also use an orange or if you don't have a fresh lime then you could also use just some lime juice from your store cupboard okay so the next step is just to get the ladle and start ladling through 
the pumpkin juice. But like I said, you know, if you've got all the time in the world, you could just leave this overnight and then come back to it. So it's a great recipe if um, you want to do it in two parts, because sometimes life gets in the way, doesn't it? And we can start it off, you know, one evening or something and then finish it off the next day. So while this is just um, straining through, I'm just going to clean my uh, preserving pan because I'm going to be using this again with the juice from here. I didn't mention as well, um, it's really important that you don't push um, the pumpkin through the muslin, just let it drip naturally because the reason for this is you don't want loads of sediment in the wine because it's going to take you much longer to clear it. So yeah, just let it drip naturally through there. So all of the um, pumpkin juice has now strained through the muslin and I've just added it back to my original preserving pan. The reason being is that I want to now bring it once again to the boil very quickly so I can add the sugar at that stage and then I know everything is absolutely sterile going into that demijohn. I really don't want to be using sulfites in my wines so if I don't make sure everything's sterile then it's very likely that it's going to go bad. Um, so I did lose a little bit of water when I was um, straining it off so I've just added um, a little bit of water from the kettle just to bring it back up to that four litre mark. Okay so the liquid is just coming to a boil now so I'm going to add the sugar. She to be really careful at this stage because if you splash yourself it's going to be really hot. So I'm just going to give it a really good mix now. At this stage you don't really want to leave it boiling with the sugar in for too long because you're going to start getting it going caramelised and it's going to go a lot darker. That will obviously affect the flavour um, but I'm not sure how, how much it would affect the flavour but you would obviously get jam if you keep going. So I'm just going to pretty much just make sure it's all stirred in. And the reason I do this is just because I want to make sure it's as sterile as possible. You're probably thinking that I could have added the sugar when the pumpkin pulp was in there as well. But because I want to get to about 15%, I don't want any of that sugar wasted. And if I then strain it through the muslin, some of that sugar would have been left with the pulp. So that's why I do it this way. And I know quite a lot of other people just add the sugar without sterilising it as well. So, you know, that's just something that I do because I'm so used to making jam. Um, and obviously with making any type of preserve, sterilisation is the key. Okay, so I'm really happy now that all of that sugar has um, dissolved. So I'm just going to turn that off now. So that is the wine pretty much done now. I just need to get it into the demijohn. But this demijohn has been um, kind of washed out of cold water. So if I add this to it now, it's probably going to smash. So what I always do is just get this added to a cold water bath as soon as possible. Um, which is basically, I fill up the sink with cold water and then I just put this in there. Now, if you've got a pan with a lid, you can obviously just put the lid on and um, just let it cool down naturally and you know that nothing's going to get in there. But because I don't have a lid for this, I always like to get it cooled quite quickly so I can get it in the demijohn as soon as possible. So I'm going to go and do that now and then once it's cooled down enough, I'll come back and I'll show you my next step. Okay, so now the um, liquid has cooled down enough that I can put it into the demijohn. I'm a bit short though, so I do need to stand on a step ladder when I pour it into the demijohn. Okay, so here goes. Hopefully it's a lovely colour. Oh, I'm really pleased. This is a really lovely colour. I started one about a week ago and I will show you that one as well. But I think it's such a lovely colour and the tannin from the tea adds a really nice tinge to it as well. I 
can just feel the screen actually. It probably doesn't look that nice actually on the screen, but from here it's really pretty. Okay, so um, I can't put the yeast in yet because it's going to be too hot, but I just need to make sure that I put the airlock on straight away to stop any bacteria getting in there. Um, now, um, with the yeast I use, I need to add it when it's between 20 to 25 degrees centigrade, but I don't need to activate it first. I can put the powder straight in there. Um, this would also be a time where you would use peptolose as well. However, I'm planning on letting this... Um, letting this kind of rest in the bottle for about six months so hopefully i won't have um any need to use pectolose but while that is cooling down i just wanted to show you um that's still really dark at the moment but i started one on the 16th of january which was uh two and a half weeks ago now i think um and this is what it looks like here so you can see um obviously depending on what pumpkin you use this was the pumpkin that was given to me by liz um at by the farm and it was called phil if you're familiar with her videos you'll know which pumpkin that was um, but this one was the cinderella pumpkin so obviously you know they are going to give a different color but this one will lighten up once some of the sediment has dropped out of it so I'm going to let it cool down now and I will show you um, when I add the yeast. Okay, so now we're at the thumb bit, we get to add the yeast. So my yeast says that you put in a heaped teaspoon, which I'm getting everywhere. So, oh, I'm just going to put that in now. And I don't shake it. Some people do shake it, but I just let it do its thing. Um, and you're possibly wondering why I've not put the liquid up to here. The reason being is that over the next couple of days, it's going to really kick off with the fermentation. And if the water and liquid is up to here, it's going to bubble through, which is fine. But it makes it a mess when it kind of bubbles through here. And because the yeast is going to be creating carbon dioxide until it finishes fermenting, I really don't need to worry about the oxygen in here because it will soon be displaced by the um, carbon dioxide being created by the um, yeast. Now, what I'm going to be doing with this wine is after seven days, I am going to rack it off. Um, the reason being is that when the yeast um, dies, it settles to the bottom and that's called the must and then it starts to decay. And once the um, yeast actually dies and there's no more sugar in here, what happens is the yeast that's still alive starts eating the yeast at the very bottom and that can make a really bad off flavor for your wine. So I'm gonna rack this after seven days. And when I do that, I will fill it up to the top there with cool boiled water and then it will be absolutely fine and will continue fermenting. Now, what I will then do is after another two weeks, I will rack again. And then after another four weeks, I will rack. And once that's happened, it should probably have finished fermenting. And then I will give it one last rack and leave it fermenting for three months or not fermenting. I will just leave it um, kind of just clearing really for the next three months. However, you know, people rack at different times. That's just the way I'm doing it with this wine. But I will actually be doing a wine tasting for this when I do finish. So if this is the first time you're watching me and you have enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button and you will be then notified. Sorry about that, my battery died. What I was saying was, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified of when I do my wine tasting. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.